hard work. Um, yeah, so we thank you for this publication. In a moment, we will view a video presentation by Ani um, on his book titled Ecological Economic Accounts Towards Intemerate Value. But first, a brief introduction uh, to Ani. Mr. Ani Saiki has been broadly focusing on regional, economic, and geopolitical themes in the Asia and Pacific regions. He was the coordinator of the Moana Nui Conferences, a partnership between the International Forum on Globalization and Pua Mohala Ikapo, and has been researching and writing on issues around trade and globalization for many years. He has been vigorously researching national accounting systems, and this publication addresses the intersections between trade and globalization and national accounting. He is from Hawaii and resides in Los Angeles with his wife and children. Hola, hello, aloha kako. My name is Arnie, Arnie Saiki. I hope everyone has had a good day and that everyone is well. First off, I want to thank the Pacific Conference of Churches, the Oceanic Center for the Arts, Culture, and Pacific Studies at the University of the South Pacific, and the Pacific Theological College for publishing my book. It's called Ecological Economic Accounts Towards Intemerate Values. This book addresses a subject called National Accounting Systems that many find to be technically challenging and I hope to make it more accessible to people. National accounting systems are supposed to reflect the strength of our economy, but how that it is measured is extremely biased, and that is something that has to change. Small economies and developing countries should have the same access to measuring our economic strength as the large industrial advanced economies do. And when you think about these differences, the answers has so many biases attached to it. Economic justice really is a justice issue, and with all the myriad and complex realities of our world, we need to consider how to equalize our global economy. So what is this book about? At the core, it's really about environmental and economic justice. It's about well-being, and it's about how we equalize advanced economies with developing countries. This book is an approach of how we can transition towards a more just, fair, and equitable global economy. And how we, how we do this, how we transition towards an, an ecological economic account is by recognizing the need for a new approach. And so we develop this equation. And this is what our working group devised. Um, this is an equation that was developed through meetings and conferences with not only the Pacific Conference of Churches and the Pacific Island Forum, but in other international conferences addressing globalization, militarization, trade, the environment, and indigenous rights. This was developed with very specific campaigns in mind around protecting our oceans from deep seabed mining, um, independence campaigns providing solidarity with the Free West Papua, um, Kanaki independence, Tahiti independence, Rapa Nui independence, and my own work around Hawaii independence. This is an equation that was created for decolonization campaigns worldwide, whether they be national or social or environmental. This is an equation in support of poor people's campaigns to help address systemic poverty. This is an equation inspired by the movement to protect Gangzhong village on the island of Je Jeju against military base building. This is an equation to support our water protectors from the Dakota Access Pipeline, our Mauna protectors against the 30 meter telescope. This equation could be used to support groups like, the, like I Don't Know More and support racial justice campaigns like Black Lives Matter. This equation was literally conceived through cross-oceanic solidarity movements. Decolonization is central to this equation because we're talking about liberation, and that does not only include people's liberation, but also an ecological and economic liberation from the tyranny of a system that has enforced an entire legal regime that has been unjust to peoples and the environment. So this equation provides a lot of room for discussion and for participation in terms of how we value our equity in a new global economy. I could speak about the equation for days, but what I want to draw your attention to are the intemerate offsets. This is the part of the equation that we can use to account for a new global economy. We are talking about a 21st century economy that has the technological tools to measure, to count, to examine, protect, nurture, analyze, collect, describe, compile, publish, monitor, and manage our environments and our interactions with each other. Intemerate offsets allow people to develop their own indigenous or customary methodologies, but at the same time, it allows states to adjust or transition at their own pace. Upon reading this book, 
people will be able to see how countries, regions, and communities are able to transition away from GDP at their own rate. And if we are going to survive, we are going to need to change the way we value our national accounting system. And we're going to do this from the ground up, not through another top-down process where international organizations try to exploit our consent. This equation is like a how-to manual for peoples, for people's liberation, for free, prior, and informed consent. It addresses how regions, countries, and peoples can put to practice a truer sense of self-determination, mutual aid, and greater cooperation over our shared ecological biodiversity, and this is important, within a global economic context. Mahalo, minakavakalevu, thank you for watching. Hola, hello. For many of us who attended the REM conference held in Nandi last year, the concept of ecological accounting seemed at first quite difficult to process. A lot of the jargon and symbols just went right over our heads. <laughs> but in his own patient way, Ani clarified the critical need to begin to rethink economic values and to consider ecological values and cost benefits as well as opportunity costs in relation to the environment. He explained the different ways that we might begin to reframe a new way of thinking about ecology and the socio-cultural and socio-ecological cost of development. It took some of us quite a while to get our heads around the jargon, but it became very clear, as he um, explained in the video, that what we were talking about was justice and equity. And for everyone involved, that was and is a very exciting part of the REM conversation. Our final uh, speaker this evening is Professor Konai Helen.